Jangan di Iya bu Good afternoon everybody uh, My name is Loki Arleo I am from II Israel Airspace Industries And I will give you a short presentation Related To The commercial aviation cyber security challenges I will uh, start with some examples that really happened. <coughs> then I will discuss and present some potential threats on the commercial aviation industries. And uh, I will finish with some approaches and recommendations how to deal with these threats on the commercial aviation industry. Next, please. First of all, let's define a mission critical system. A mission critical system is basically any system that has inputs, outputs, has a command and control, has communication, all kinds of communications. Uh, it can be communication to local built-in uh, built sensors or communication to the outside world, namely to remote stations. It can be it can be a, a mission critical system. It can be a commercial aircraft. It can be a UAV. It can be a tank. It can be a naval ship. Whatever has means of sensing, communicating, and controlling devices. I will start with some real events that happened. Uh, well, back in December 2011. The Iranian government declared that they hijacked a UAV drone. At the beginning, the UAV uh, authorities claimed that it was not hijacked, but it was shut down. However, one week later, President Obama asked the, the Iranian government to return the hijacked drone, which that, uh, obviously the Iranian government did not. Uh, it became a big debate how come, how was this drone hijacked? And this was basically the first time that actually the terminology of GPS spoofing what was put on the table as an option to hijack drones or any other GPS based or GPS navigated airborne device. Next please. Three years later, November 2014, again the Iranian government claimed that they flew a replica of the hijacked drone and uh, it was, well, it was identified as using technologies and know-how from the hijacked drone. So, these days, it is well, everybody admits the fact that the, the drone was hijacked most of the technologies that were evaluated, how it was hijacked, came to the decision that it was hijacked using GPS spoofing. GPS spoofing, for those who are not really familiar, is basically to take over the communication of the drone with the GPS satellites, satellites that, it, that it sees at that moment, and impose false data and false navigation data into the downlink from the satellites. They take it over and by that you can force an offline object to land at any position that you would you like it to, to land. Next please. Well, the big question came okay, up. How can we avoid why why am I telling all this story? Because this fact of uh, hijacking a flight object becomes more and more these days a threat on the commercial aviation market. So basically, the, best, the first challenge that we have to deal with is to find a way to harden, cyber-wise I mean, to harden all the mission critical systems. How can we, can we do that? I mean, we have to include some processes, manageable processes into our software systems of the mission critical systems. Uh, we have to avoid any possible remote maintenance. Using remote maintenance terminals basically provide the means to introduce into the system data that can help 
to hygiene. Uh, we need to test our systems as regressively as possible. I mean to test it against all kinds of GPS and other penetration tests to make sure that our systems are as protected as possible against any potential cyber attack. And we have to go and find out how hacking forums are dealing with issues to hack mission critical systems. Next please. August 2012. Please bear in mind this is about nine months after the hijack of the UAV. Researchers demonstrate that demonstrate cyber vulnerabilities of the automatic, the automatic dependence surveillance broadcast system that is in commercial aircraft. Namely, most most of the of the airplanes at the moment at these days have an entertainment system, and using this entertainment system, they increase the vulnerability of the aircraft to potential cyber activity. <coughs> Again, April 2017, there is a real demonstration published in the newspaper, published on CNN. A researcher demonstrates how an aircraft can be hijacked using a smartphone. Using a smartphone, the guy went to eBay, bought some navigation uh, equipment from eBay, and he demonstrated that using the entertainment system of, of an air, aircraft and using one application that he wrote on his uh, smart Android smartphone, he was able to take over and control the aircraft. Okay? All these data can be found, of course, you can find over there all the links where we took it from. All these data just provided inputs to the bad guys, so-called the bad guys, the hackers. If they have negative intention, how potentially they can exercise these negative intentions. <laughs> Another, another case, August 2014, there were, there were publications on how you can overtake the SATCOM, SATCOM that is used by the commercial aircraft to communicate with their base stations, to communicate with the, the, the ATCs, and to communicate their location. Next. Again, now we go to the bad guys, they, all, they declare in their own forums, look, we can hijack, we can attack an aircraft. The hijacking of, the attack, of the, these attacks are well uh, described in these forums. They use the entertainment system and they use the onboard Wi-Fi's. Using the onboard Wi-Fi's and the entertainment system that are connected to the aircraft buses, enables them to take over the navigation system of the aircraft. That is what they demonstrate in these uh, forums. They, it enables them to take over the engines of the aircraft and they, it enables them to take over and control the aircraft flying system. At the moment, if people are going to the internet, they can find blueprints <coughs> published by these hackers how to do and how to overtake and hijack a commercial aircraft. Now this is the sad part of the story. Flight MH317 by Malaysian aircraft. In many places it was published that as nobody found any evidence what happened to this flight, it may happen that this flight was hijacked using GPS spoofing technologies. Unfortunately, Chinese uh, insurance companies take advantage about this theory of hijacking this flight. And as for last Thursday, that is when I checked, uh, lately checked it, the Chinese insurance companies are not willing to pay any claims related to flight MH370. Uh, nobody at the moment can avoid 
or can state that this theory is wrong as nobody found any other evidence so far. Many families, unfortunately, in China are, wi are waiting to find any evidence or any proof that this uh, GPS proofing theory of this specific flight is incorrect. At the moment, it's, nobody can avoid that. Next. Now, there is a report. A report to the Congress of the U of United States which state it is a, a brand new one, April 2015, and uh, it is a result of a conference that happened in March 2015 in Seattle related to the vulnerabilities of, of commercial aircraft, where there is, there is stated in a report to the Congress that, look, the ATC introduces, the communication with the ATC introduces significant cyber risk into the uh, commercial aviation uh, market. At the moment, this is a just a report, which is just a report, but it is well evaluated and wrote by the Congress of the United States. It's a brand new one since April 2015. They will have to provide recommendations to a committee by December 2015. Next one. So, these are the findings. First, uh, first uh, decision that was made with the initial report that they have to protect their traffic control, uh, control information system. Then th they should they sh should find find some uh, means to protect the aircraft avionics and to provide and provide a cyber security role within the FAA. I mean, to define who is most responsible for what and how in the cyber security arena for the commercial and civil aviation market. Next one, United Airlines, this is again the fact, after, uh, after that uh, conference that I just mentioned in March 2015, by the way, in which Boeing invited the major commercial airliners in the States to discuss and evaluate the cyber risk, cyber attack risk in the commercial aviation market. As you can see here, United Airlines, they barred a security researcher just because he started to talk about uh, hacking an aircraft on a social network, on Twitter in this case. So this was the, this is the first evidence that the airliners are aware about the risk. They are aware about the fact that people can damage the market using cyber means. Now, FBI. I mean, this is the first evidence that the authorities, officially, are fully aware about the fact that hackers that claim that they can overtake engines of a commercial aircraft, by the way, in this case, this hacker was really uh, arrested by the FBI. I mean, they took it very seriously, the fact that he claimed and they wanted to learn how it can be done. So far, it was not published. The result of his investigation was not published. But the fact that he was arrested points out the fact that the authorities in the United States are fully aware about the risk and they are in a process to learn how to protect themselves, how to act against these kind of activities. Just for the now, I mean, where, where, where can you learn how to do? If you know how to do, you will know how to avoid. I mean, that is one phase in the process, how to avoid this kind of things happen. One, the how to do uh, notes are used, uh, usually published in academic researchers. Academic researchers, I mean, each and every university would like to publish as many publications as possible yearly. Some of them are related to the aviation risk. Some of them are related to the cyber aviation risk. These are extremely detailed publications, extremely detailed processes on how to do and how to activate cyber events and analyze each level of the system to analyze the vulnerabilities of each level 
how can it be damaged, how can it be penetrated. Then we are going to model the, the system and have a real model about how this system works. We will analyze the particular components to find where is the single point of failure, where a, a system can fail if, you, if that subsystem is attacked. We are finding the supply chain vulnerabilities and we take OSINT, I mean open source intelligence, everything that we can find on the internet and we are going to use it to implement it and to protect our system from this kind of information. Phase three is to customize the hardening. You cannot harden an airborne system the same way you harden a missile system or the same way you harden a satellite. Okay? The hardening has to be tailored to the system and its use. I'm not going to, pro to, to tell you the whole, uh, the whole process. Basically, we have a five-stage process. The five stages are, are very, very similar to what I just described. That you have, you have to find the, the gaps, you have to find the vulnerabilities of the system, you have to tailor, uh, to tailor a solution against a potential attack. Phase three is to learn lessons from all the events, from all the cyber events that are published and are known and uh, uh, can be learned in the past. Next one, please. Phase four, we, you go to the component system and the ecosystem hardening, the whole system hardening to make sure that you have at the end of this process a hardened mission critical system. A hardened system means a system that withstands several phases of, of penetration testing. Several phases of different penetration testing by different organization, by different organizations and, and Penetration testing were, that were defined by different entities. To do that, we use the services of hackers. White hat hackers, companies that work for us only, they define and they think like hackers, therefore they know how to, how to defend themselves against bad guys or black hat hackers operations. Basically, all these penetration tests that I'm talking about are tests that are defined, written, operated, and the results are recorded by hackers, by professional hackers. And at the end, at the end we implement the cyber tracking and situation awareness. After we are aware about the vulnerabilities, we have the list of, uh, of uh, um, penetration tests that the system was tested against, then we, are, we can declare with, uh, how, to what level is this system hardened against, against any potential cyber event, cyber attack. Next what do we mean by situation, cyber situation awareness? We have to be aware that we have to maintain the effective coverage all the time of any new hacking, uh, hacking capabilities that arise in the market. So this is an ongoing process. Then there is, a, there is an asymmetry between the attacker and the defender. You know, the cyber arena, we believe the cyber arena is led by the bad guys. They win. They win because they lead the processes. They are the ones that initiate activities, the good guys, the white hat hackers, and the, the legal hackers are basically following and reacting to the activities that the bad guys are initiating. So we have to deal, to do, to deal with this kind of uh, asymmetry, and we have to make sure that our capabilities, our capabilities to protect ourselves from the initiative of the bad guys are improving every time, are improving constantly. I mean, we cannot leave the market and we cannot leave the, the cyber arena to the bad guy's leadership all the time. We have to take over at some, at some point. And, I mean, we may have many false alarms in what we are doing, but if we can avoid one significant, one significant uh, uh, attack, it's worth it. Uh, 
Uh, this is just a general uh, view of how we believe, how we believe, I'm not sure it's very clear, how we believe we can take uh, and have the cyber situation awareness. It is basically based on sensors, a lot of intelligence, a lot of study from the open source, from the internet, everything, things that are published. We have tools to integrate all, all the know-how that we collect from the internet to prepare a situation awareness, cyber arena situation awareness. Now, it is independent to the mission critical system that we are talking about. You can build a, a cyber situation awareness a picture for any system. This one. Well, this is basically I'm finishing with what we should do. I mean, we, as the good guys, as, as the, the people that want to protect the industries, that want to fly safely. In the very near future, we should, we should, should identify the mission critical systems in our organization that we want to protect. We want to make them as safe as possible. We, make, we want to make sure that the chances to, to implement on them any cyber attack is minimized. So, uh, in the first three months, I mean in the short midterm, we, have, we should have a trusted consultant. And this is a trusted consultant, it is somebody out of our organization that can evaluate externally the situation of our systems to find out what are the weaknesses of the system and to develop plans of, 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 of how to overcome the weaknesses of our system. Then, they have to conduct a system level analysis. The system level analysis is to identify each and every component, component that has that weakness. And to go, to, to, to go and conduct the modeling of the system that we want to protect. Next one. I mean, this is the long-term activity we should get, define, and initiate a full model, a full process, a full method, how to harden and protect our MCSs. We should go into cyber R&D labs in which we are going to run penetration tests to find out the results and find ways to overcome any failure or any weakness that this penetration test will find. And the, the, last, the last one is to initiate a program, an organization-wide program, in which we generate a cyber situation awareness picture on a daily basis for each and every mission critical system that we have in our organization. I hope I didn't frighten you too much to fly. I mean, everybody is flying, and we will continue to fly. We have to be aware about the fact that there are weaknesses. We have to bring to the companies, to the manufacturers, awareness the fact that cyber is a real weapon, and that we have to protect ourselves and our organizations and our aircrafts from any potential cyber event. Thank you very much.